Hi and welcome to How to Make Video Game Music for Beginners, episode 2. In the previous episode we talked about the neutral game music, some kind of a song that you can play throughout the gameplay. Today we will talk about the captured music, and that is a more suspenseful kind of music, when the player is caught by the enemy. My name is Matthias, and if you're new to my channel, make sure to subscribe, hit the like and that notification bell, so that you get a notice as soon as I release new videos. Let's take the tour! Many times I start the compositions at the piano. The piano to me is a very natural instrument for composing. And obviously this track was no exception. I knew we needed some kind of dramatic music, maybe slightly jazzy, with a pulse and uh, maybe some spicy chords uh, to make the player on the edge. And I had this riff going on with a C, F, G, B flat to C. And uh, we know that these notes are from the C minor scale. So maybe the first chord can just be a C minor. But to spice it up a little bit to make it more jazzy, we add a 9 and also add a 7th. So we have this. But maybe move down this one down here. So we have this chord instead. And with a C in the bass. Generally we could just have gone to the to the from the tonic there. The C minor is our tonic and the G G7 will be our dominant. But that's a little bit boring and we want more jazzy feel. But why not go from the C major add 9 to a C sus 4 with the added 9? So. so that's the first chord phrase. And now for the second round. So instead of the C minor 7th add 9, we choose a B flat add 11. Uh, but with C in the bass. So we don't have the G anymore. But we instead have notes from the uh, B flat. So that's our B flat add 11. This is the added 11. And down to uh, F6. Uh, with a C in the bass. So that uh, sounds a little bit more dramatic and jazzy in my ears. So let's uh, play through the chord progression. Right, so we have our dramatic chord progression and now we just need to arrange this in some way. And luckily this is a very short game loop, so uh, there's not uh, too many instruments or too much things happening. But there's enough stuff to make it interesting. And to begin with, I recorded the bass line, and it's a courtesy of the Shredded Precision Bass. It's a very nice bass. And this is the MIDI for the bass. I actually had it first played with the fingerstyle bass of Logic Pro, the stock instruments of Logic Pro. And it's actually quite a good bass, especially in a mix. It has this really tubby sound. But I wanted a little bit more realistic sound, so I went for the Shredded Precision bass. And now when we have the bass line laid down, we could record the piano. And... Uh, it's also played with uh, the Complete Control S61 keyboard. As you can see, I was using the Complete Control plugin here to load up the gentleman. I think it's uh, quite nice to have the Complete Control because it's very easy to browse through presets directly from the MIDI controller. So I found a gentleman preset that I liked. And uh, initially, in the first part of the track here, we're just uh, playing the bass. And then on the second part, we have the, the chords, the harmonization coming in. So you can see I just muted 
the chords on the first half to make uh, a little bit of changes happening in, in this cue. The second part. And I also wanted to add a little bit of melody in this, so I added uh, another preset of uh, the gentleman here, but uh, with the, the silver reverb and some OTT to make this a, a big lush sound. The OTT brings the brilliance and the brightness to the piano a little bit here. And we also have a reversed uh, piano. So that's a kind of piano crescendo that leads into the piano notes. So that gives us a, a bass and a mid-range with the piano and also some lush uh, bright piano at the top end. And now we need to fill out this track with some more stuff. So I added a kalimbo to double the piano, like this. So uh, the kalimba actually plays that uh, harmonization, the chords there on the first part of the song, and then on the second part we have the piano doubling this. And this is just a kalimba from the native package of the contact sampler. And we have a synth fill here. Playing the same chord, it's just a basic massive preset. with a little bit of EQ to get rid of some low end and high end, so for a more focused sound. And I think they blend quite well, the kalimba here and the synth fill and our piano. And I think it's a great idea to layer instruments this way if you have a small arrangement with just a, a lead melody and maybe you think that this lead melody is a little bit thin and then you can layer it up with a few other instruments uh, with various flavors and characters to make a more full sound. Then we also have a synth pulse here that comes in to fill out uh, after the initial chords. And that pulse definitely helps to uh, bring uh, suspense and uh, pulse and action to this cue. Again, this is loaded via complete control and it's a diva patch. So it basically just plays the, the tonic, the C there, in, in different octaves. Then we have uh, the street lights here, and that's a patch that I also just found by accidentally browsing via the Complete Control S61 keyboard. And I found this uh, massive patch that sounds like this. And it's used uh, kind of as a symbol here at the beginning of the track and also uh, when we begin the second half here. So it's, it's almost in as a sense a symbol kind of sound but a synth patch played as a symbol with a lot of reverb from uh, Valhalla Room and EQ to get rid of top end and low end for a more focused sound here. I thought it was uh, a little bit harsh and, and too bright, especially for a game loop like this. Then I recorded some guitars, which you saw there in the introduction when we played through this track. It's recorded with a Gibson guitar, just some rhythm to fill out this, uh, this track.
Nothing fancy, just a little bit of EQ to get rid of some low mids uh, here, 274 Hz. And uh, get rid of the low end and the high end, and a little bit of a boost here at the, at the high end. And I'm using the basic compressor of, of Logic, and I always activate this uh, distortion to soft here, so you have a little bit of tube saturation on, uh, on the guitars, and just a little bit of, of compression. Then I use the gain device here to uh, introduce a little bit of gain to the guitar. Then we also have a second guitar track here, which is more of a pad sound. We can deactivate the effects to hear the dry sound. So that's a very high, high pitched chord. And we add some compression and silver reverb to that sound. And some choral. This is a native instruments effect to give it some chorus. Choral, chorus. I also had some tremolo here. It's the logic stock set to a soft tremolo patch here. And the tremolo depth is quite high here to make it a very pronounced effect. And if you want to add a pulse and action to a sound, it can be a good way to just lay down some pad, uh, some sustained pad, and add a soft tremolo to it, so it's uh, kind of chopped up to 16s or, or 8 notes. So in context, it sounds like this. Okay, so let's talk about the percussion section for the track. I initially had the cymbals with the Stylus RMX, but I thought they were a little bit outdated and a little bit boring. So I replaced them with the Heaviosity DM307 cymbals. And they sound very nice. Sounds like this. Very natural and pure cymbals. Just a little bit of compression and a little bit of EQ. Then we have another set of percussion from the marching kit patch. It's uh, from the Storm Drum 2 library. It's a very nice uh, marching kit uh, patch. Sounds like this. So that's basically just some hi-hats and marching snares uh, to give that, uh, that shuffle rhythm to this cue. And finally we have uh, some organic knocks or knacks uh, recorded just by me tapping some, some stuff in, in the studio. And that's just to give this a uh, little bit of organic percussion or a little bit more flavor to it. Chroma reverb with a dense room patch to place that sound in the room. Sounds uh, very nice in context. And then finally we have some tambourine at the end there for the second part of, of the cue. And now on the second part we also have a shimmer pad, and that's uh, courtesy of Diva, if I remember correctly. Yeah, it's a patch called the Bring Forth. And again I added a tremolo, a soft tremolo patch with a quite high depth. So we have a very profound uh, tremolo effect. Almost, uh, it's almost like a volume gating. And this uh, tremolized pad helps to bring more pulse to this little cue. Now make sure you check out my latest contact instrument, the Doombeck. It's a hand drum percussion instrument, and you can get more information at my website, morningdoomedia.com. Right, so that's basically how I created this uh, dramatic captured music cue. 
If you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the comment section to this video. Again, if you're new, please subscribe, hit the like and the notification bell so that you get a notice once I release new videos. Now you can continue and watch my next episode on composing and producing. Right, my name is Matthias, I hope you had a nice time watching this video. See you in the next episode. Bye!